Hello YouTube, I'm back uh, doing another test. I did uh, those couple tests with the coils on the same core that I mentioned in the last bit and I wanted to make a video to show that um, but in a minute and also to just to show these diagrams again that I had from a previous video um, but won't be a real long vid hopefully <laughs> I'm just letting it settle now at about the same speed as the other last video <coughs> so I have the two coils on here the two coil sets basically uh, well actually I have the thick wire set and the um, one of the thinner wire set this is about 25 gauge this is 16 gauge thick stuff She's picking up a little bit on it. But, um, just wanted to show, uh, I'm going to let it rev up a little bit more this time. <laughs> uh, a couple people mentioned that, Andy, I know you did. And I want to see that too, but, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. See how far we can take it. I want them, well they're not shorted right now, but I'd like to mention uh, they don't get warm that I've noticed so far. If I felt them and as they operate and they don't get warm. They're not shorted right now though. So we're letting it settle down. I'm going to engage the coils. Basically I have a switch on each one again and I'm going to close the switch. Settles here. This speed that it's going right here, whatever it is, I think it's about 300 RPM, probably a little lower maybe. But um, the voltage that's picked up here on this little pickup coil to show the speed change, um, this voltage here, 13. Point is when the effect kicks in the best, right? There's enough current going through the coils for it to kick in. The effect happens right from the start when you start the wheel. Like if I engage these coils and start the wheel, whatever, give it a crank, it helps the wheel right from the start. You know, a little bit, and it's more and more and more and more until it builds up its uh, current in the coil as much as it can. Anyways, let's flip the switch and see what happens. My uploads take a while, so... Uh, the speed's increasing quickly again. You can hear it. Pick it up, pick it up. Gets a, a couple resonance points. That's really good. <laughs> See more current building in those coils as the speed speeds up. It's dependent on the amount of copper in the coils. We'll talk about that in a minute. It's flying out. I love that sound. <laughs> now I have another coil set I was going to put on. It was kind of fighting with me and it's getting late. And I wanted to get a video out there and show uh, the things I found today. And share it with you guys. I hope you can hear me talking. <laughs> it's... Uh, it's ripping now. I didn't let it get this far yesterday. <laughs> it's flying. Wow. It's still climbing.
seems to. Uh, that's probably the top end right there, right here, 22 volts, on this little pickup coil. Just the voltage potential in that little coil to show the speed and speed change. I don't actually know how fast it's going. But it's flying. It picked up uh, 13, 7, 9 volts. So I could do just like in the last vid where I reduced the input until the voltage in this little pickup coil is 13.3 uh, again. You can see that less, less current going into the motor. Right? That was the uh, vid yesterday. But I just want to stop it so I can talk a little bit without the, without the extra noise. Who's that? He's still got his tinfoil hat on. I was going to put one on too, but I just look horrible tonight. It's like one in the morning. <laughs> but I wanted to tell you, this is the main reason I wanted to make the video, is because I tested on the same core using this core right here. Uh, this set of coils, which is the 16 gauge thick, thick stuff from a ma uh, mag the microwave oven uh, primary winding on the transformer. Um, so I tested these two coils by themselves with no other coils on the wheel. Uh, starting at 13.3 volts. So I, I gave the wheel a spin. Got it settled with the rheostat at 13.3 volts here. And then I engaged the coil. Right? Well, I'll turn them both off now. But. Then I engage the coil to see how much pickup they would give to the wheel, how much extra speed. <clears throat> and uh, I also tested uh, that set of coils right there. Right? That's 25 gauge. So I tested them both. Um, starting at 13.3 volts when I engaged them to see the difference in the push on the wheel with the different gauge uh, magnet wire. This thick, thick 16 gauge compared to the um, 25 gauge, right? Now, I tested them both the same way. Um, first, I did the 25 gauge uh, coil set. First I weighed them, that set was three, uh, 730 grams and it measured 34 ohms. Now, and I've mentioned the ohmage in the previous videos but I should point out that now that, that 34 ohms is for this coil set. Where are you? Right? So when I test across those coils here and here, right, with the switch off, right? It measures 34 ohms on those coils over there. But those coils, each one of those coils is 25 gauge. There's a lot of wire on each one of those. I filled them right up. Each one of those coils is, uh, I want to, you know, it's 68 ohms. 68 ohms. But even though they're wound in opposite directions, even though they're wound in opposite directions and there's funky stuff going on with the, um, the current, um, the, the reading the ohmage is the same. So when you put them in parallel, it cuts the ohms in half and you end up with uh, half the ohms. So when it's measured across right here and right here the terminals the two connecting points like I showed in the previous video this and this are the same thing it's just that that core is bent but when you connect uh, uh, the ohm meter to those connections here we go you it reacts just like uh, resistors in parallel, right? Same thing. Anyways, wanted to point that out. Wanted to point out about the heat 
they don't get warm with usage like that's cold right now it's cold um, is there anything else but what I uh, what I did was the test I weighed them the 25 gauge set was 730 grams the 16 gauge set was uh, 836 grams right uh, so a hundred grams difference basically pretty close pretty close in weight that one was 34 ohms the 16 gauge uh, measured at 0 0.2 ohms right so <laughs> very very low impedance there so I started at 13.3 volts for both right got it to settle down right at 13.3 let it settle for minutes you know I let it go at 13.3 for a few minutes before I did the test and then I engaged the coils flipped the switch shorted them right out the ultimate load right and uh, then they pick up speed well the very very interesting thing is is that they both picked up speed uh, when measured on this little pickup coil right the voltage rose to uh, 18.7 volts in the 25 gauge and 18.8 .8 volts in the 16 gauge which is basically the same thing right now the interesting thing to go with that is that the 16 gauge coils weighed 836 grams and the 25 gauge weighed just a little bit less right so this it seems to me that obviously the gauge of the wire doesn't matter for the effect that you're getting on the wheel it's more based on the amount of copper right the gate just fill the spool up right or you know your desire to wait for your coils but um, the actual gauge doesn't matter that 16 gauge is very thick wire and the 25 gauge is you know kind of middle of the road not tiny tiny but much smaller than this uh, but there I, I wanted to point that out that's the main thing I wanted to point out in this video is that it was very very interesting that the push the end voltage on this little coil here measuring the speed was basically the same for both sets of coils right with a vast difference between the gauges and the amounts were very very close little bit of difference right so it's telling me that the amount of copper is what matters not the gauge right so I wanted to point that out maybe just have a quick look at these diagrams again same setup right uh, I'm not using the pulse width modulator anymore I'm using an AC motor with the rheostat uh, the wheel the magnets are alternating although now I, I have changed it the magnets are doubled up right um, it's just under 15 pounds it's got some good mass to it so the the immediate pickup and speed and the drive to that wheel that these coils give is is really cool but basically it's oppositely wound um, coils oppositely wound coils uh, paralleled up just like that and um, shorted out now I found I guess I should mention specifically you probably gathered from my test that shorting them out gives the best effect right I've run them through loads I've run them through other things too but shorting them out gives the best effect keeps the current in the coils and gives the best effect on the wheel but the gauge doesn't matter which is awesome and obviously the frequency like that's kicking in at about 300 rpm that's that's a speed that I can put a ripcord on it give it a yank and get it going 300 rpm no problem and with enough coils on here if I may speculate on my own video <laughs> if I may speculate on what I'm doing here um, I could put a ripcord on it give it a yank with enough coils on there and it'll run itself and I'll call it free energy and perpetual motion and certain people out there will have heart attacks and strokes it'll be great <laughs> a little comic relief there 
Uh, oh, also, our Lord and Savior is coming. Be ready. And the cameras. See, the camera's telling me to be ready. I'm trying to be. Uh, maybe, and one last thing is that the two diagrams on Ed's, two of Ed's books, showed us exactly how to do this. Here's a diagram showing us uh, from his one book. That was on the cover of his one book. And it shows us to use oppositely wound coils. <laughs> and here's the other one. Shows us how to wire them up. And you pass the magnets in between the prongs. Again, just like he said in his book. Exactly how he said in his book. But there you go. There was another test. We let it rev up a little more. Went a little faster. It was really, really good. Really, really good speed. Um, but I'm going to get more coils on it. And I'll be tuning and monkeying and making more videos. Going to get wire. I'll be putting more coils on. Thanks for everyone's love and support. I love everybody out there. there I love all you guys. And uh, there's quite a cast of characters out there. It's awesome. And um, more and more people are trying it too, which is really, really good too. Anyways, I blabbed enough. There you go. I'll uh, talk to you later.